And now for our dinosaur of the day, Massospondylus, which was requested from Zach via email. So thanks, Zach. Massospondylus lived in the early Jurassic. The type species is Massospondylus carinatus. There have been seven species named in the last 150 years, but only two of the species are still valid. Fossils have been found in South Africa, Lesotho, and Zimbabwe. Other fossils originally thought to be Massospondylus, but are now other species, were found in Arizona, India, and Argentina. Richard Owen described this dinosaur first in 1854, based on fossils found in South Africa, and it was one of the first dinosaurs named. Originally, Owen didn't think that Massospondylus bones were dinosaur bones. He thought they were large, extinct carnivorous reptiles related to lizards, chameleons, and iguanas. Joseph Millard Orpin found 56 bones, including vertebrae from the neck, back, and tail, shoulder blade, humerus, partial pelvis, femur, tibia, and bones from the hands and feet in 1853 in South Africa, and then donated them to the Hunterian Museum at the Royal College of Surgeons in London. The bones were disarticulated, so it was hard to tell if they all came from the same species. Unfortunately, all those fossils were destroyed on May 10, 1941, when a German bomb hit the Hunterian Museum. Eighty partial skeletons and four skulls have been found in South Africa, Lesotho, and Zimbabwe. A skull in Arizona was found in 1985 that was thought to be Massospondylus. It was 25% larger than other skulls found, but a recent study identified it as a new genus, Cerasaurus. Fossils were also found in Argentina that were thought to be Massospondylus, but they were renamed to Adiopaposaurus in 2009. Other former species include Massospondylus browni, named in 1895, Massospondylus harrisi, named in 1911, Massospondylus hislopi, named in 1890, Massospondylus huni, named in 1981, Massospondylus rossi, named in 1890, and Massospondylus schwartzi, named in 1924. Massospondylus browni, harrisi, and schwartzi were found in South Africa, but it's all fragmentary material, so it's regarded as indeterminate. Massospondylus hislopi and rossi were found in India, and hislopi is indeterminate, but rossi may be actually a theropod. Massospondylus huni was a combination of Lufengosaurus and Massospondylus. They were thought to be synonyms, but this is no longer accepted. But the second valid species that's still considered valid of Massospondylus is Massospondylus Kali, which was named in 2009 based on a partial skull from South Africa from the same time and area as Massospondylus carinatus, but they have a slightly different brain case. So it's considered a valid species as a second species as of 2014. Other dubious synonymous or junior synonyms of Massospondylus include Leptospondylus, Pachyspondylus, Aristosaurus, Dromicosaurus, and Hortolatosaurus. Named in 1894, but according to paleontologist Broom in 1911, quote, originally most of the skeleton was in the rock, and it was regarded by the farmers as the skeleton of a bushman, but it is said to have been destroyed through fear that a bushman's skeleton in the rock might tend to weaken the religious belief of the rising generation. Another synonym is Ignavusaurus. Massospondylus was 13 to 20 feet or 4 to 6 meters long, had a long neck and tail, a small head, a slender body, and had sharp, long thumb claws that it used either to help eat or possibly in defense. It had tiny fourth and fifth digits, so its forepaws looked lopsided. It weighed about 2,200 pounds or 1,000 kilograms, and it was about 3 feet or 1 meter tall. It's similar to the dinosaur Plateosaurus, which, as a side note, interestingly, in a 2005 study, they found that Plateosaurus had growth patterns based on environmental factors when in favorable climate or around lots of food, it grew fast, which is known as developmental plasticity. But this is not seen in other dinosaurs, including Massospondylus. One study actually found that Massospondylus grew steadily, and another found that it grew a maximum of 76 pounds, or 34.6 kilograms per year, and grew until about age 15. So it grew steadily throughout its life. It also had air sacs, like birds. Its forelimbs were half the length of hind limbs, but were still powerful. It was originally thought to be quadrupedal, but a 2007 study found that it was actually bipedal. And the study found that Massospondylus may have used its short arm to swat at predators in defense, combat with each other, or help with feeding. Its arms would have been too short to reach its mouth, though. It had a limited range of motion, so it would not have been able to be quadrupedal. Its hand could not rotate to face downwards, and its forelimbs could not swing in a way similar to its hind limbs. Its thumb claws could have been used for digging, grooming, stripping plants, and fighting. 
2007 papers support massospondylus as a family. Massospondylidae. And they're also considered uh, sauropodomorph. But knowledge of early sauropodomorphs keeps changing. So in addition to being a sauropodomorph, massospondylus was an herbivore and a platysaurid, which is a heavy, thick-limbed herbivore. Interestingly, sauropodomorphs link later sauropods to bipedal saurischians. Massospondylus was probably an herbivore, though early sauropodomorphs may have been omnivores. Until the 1980s, paleontologists thought that sauropodomorphs, like massospondylus, may have been carnivorous, but now they think it could have been herbivores or omnivores due to their jaw articulation, according to a 2004 study by Galton and Upchurch. In 2001, paleontologists said that they may have eaten small prey or carrion. Gastrolids have also been found with three massospondylus fossils in Zimbabwe. Originally, scientists thought that these gastrolids helped aid in digestion since they couldn't chew, but in 2007, wings and sander showed that there was a large amount of polished stones, which, quote, precluded a use as an effective gastric mill in most non-theropod dinosaurs. So they were saying that sauropods didn't use gastrolids, and they found that actually a theropod, Lewinhanosaurus, used gastrolids, which is interesting. Yeah, I wonder how they ended up with gastrolids near that fossil if they weren't using them as gastrolids. <laughs> Massospondylus had two types of teeth. They had small pointed teeth like theropods in the front of the mouth and spatulate teeth in the rear of their mouth, which is why there's a lot of debate over its diet. They possibly had cheeks. They also possibly had an overbite. Some scientists think that they even had a beak, but this seems unlikely. The number of teeth they had varies depending on its skull size. The largest one has 26 teeth on each side of its lower jaw. It's not clear what predators went after Massospondylus. Most theropods from the same time and place, such as Megapnosaurus, were smaller than Massospondylus, and they may have slashed quickly to wear down their prey, but Massospondylus would have used its foot claws to protect itself. Another potential predator was the theropod Dracovinator, which was 20 feet or 6 meters long. In 1976, six to seven massospondylus eggs, six inches or 15 centimeters long, were found in South Africa by James Kitching, but it took 30 years to start the extraction. They are the oldest known dinosaur embryos found so far. It took five years to excavate the eggs, and Kitching decided he didn't have the resources to remove the fossil from the egg rock without hurting the bones, so he focused on the egg shells and found that they were similar to crocodiles and birds. In 1979, he wrote a preliminary report and found a skull that was well-preserved. It was 10 millimeters from ear to ear, and he suggested that one of the eggs had hatched. But because the embryos couldn't be well-studied, at the time people debated whether they were actually massospondylus or even dinosaur eggs. A 2002 study said that they were more crocodilian than dinosaurian. But in 2004, Rees and Scott from the University of Toronto studied the eggs with CAT scans. Still, the scans were inconclusive because it was too hard to distinguish the rock from the bone. Scott spent a year preparing the eggs using tiny air-driven jackhammers and thin needles to remove the rock and then looked at the eggs under a high-powered microscope and found that there were, yes, two dinosaur embryos in the fetal position. But it was still hard to analyze the eggs. The femur was only 1.4 millimeters in diameter. But at least it confirmed that the eggs were massospondylus, and the findings were published in 2005. Eventually, those eggs were flown to Grenoble to be examined with a CT scan at the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility. Until CT scanning came about, the X-ray resolution needed was too high, 6 microns, so only a few places in the world could do it. In 2014, the team moved the eggs to this facility in Grenoble, but it will take a while to process all the information. They have about 1,000 gigabytes of information, and they'll be doing that at the University of Witwatersrand Virtual Paleontology Lab in Johannesburg. Additional findings were published in 2012, and they actually found 10 more egg clutches with up to 34 eggs in each clutch. They were found on four fossil horizons. So the nesting site may have been used multiple times. The nesting area was near a lake, and eggshells were thin, 0.1 millimeters, so they were probably partially buried in the substrate. There's no hints that Massospondylus made the nest, but the eggs were arranged in tight rows, so they were probably pushed there. The eggs were probably near ready to hatch. They had large heads with short snouts and large eyes and a short neck. The forelimbs and high limbs, interestingly, were the same length, so Massospondylus may have been quadrupedal as babies and then bipedal as adults. There was no teeth and they couldn't move too much, so they would have had to be fed by their parents until they doubled in size, and scientists are guessing that they doubled in size before leaving the nest based on footprint sizes. Massospondylus mothers would have been too large to incubate the eggs, so that's why they probably clustered them into the tight rows. 
The nests don't have any bowl-shaped depressions or signs of nest construction, but it may have been a communal nesting site because there's strength in numbers to defend the eggs. The lake near the nest often flooded. It was a seasonal cycle, so it was probably bad timing that resulted in the eggs that paleontologists found. Again, this is the oldest known dinosaur group nesting site. Others known are 100 million years younger. And this behavior shows complex reproductive behavior. So again, Massospondylus is a sauropodomorph. And sauropodomorphs were large herbivores. Sauropodomorpha means lizard feet forms. Frederick von Huhn in 1932 established this suborder and broke it into two groups, Prosauropoda and Sauropoda. There's no gaps between Prosauropod and Sauropod lineages, and recent cladistic analyses suggest the clad Prosauropoda is a junior synonym of Platyosauridae. This is because there's no evidence that it's easier to reduce digits during evolution, and Prosauropods had a smaller outer toe on the hind feet compared to sauropods. There's four families in this group, Platysauridae, Anchisauridae, Massospindylidae, and Melanorosauridae. They're found on most continents, and they're some of the world's oldest known dinosaur bones. Most lived in Europe. They've also been found in Asia and the Americas, and some even found in Madagascar. They were probably herbivores with muscular legs to stand on two feet and eat tall vegetation. They probably traveled in groups. They could have been both quadrupedal and bipedal. Their forelimbs were about half the length of their hind limbs, and their mouths were like nutcrackers, though they probably couldn't chew. Instead, they may have had these gastric mills in their stomach walls. As mentioned earlier, these would have been stones embedded that grind food, but they were inefficient, which is probably why this group went extinct. They had tiny skulls, and they had thumb claws that they used for defense, and they had large nostrils, and were possibly catharmeral. 